Hello everyone, welcome to A plus B I. This channel is all about complex numbers and in this video we're going to be solving a very nice exponential equation with complex numbers. Kind of like a non-standard type, but exponential equations are so much fun to solve. Would you agree? Anyways, we have 3 to the power z equals negative square root of 3 and we're going to be solving for z values. I'm also going to be showing you the result from Wolfram Alpha Let's find out if that agrees with what I found. Okay, so if we did not have the minus sign, everything would be better, right? Don't you think? So if we had 3 to the z equals square root of 3, you would probably think about it as, okay, this is 3 to the power 1 half, z equals 1 half, case closed, we can go home. But that's not the case. That's not the case. We have a minus sign. And that's what makes this equation more and more interesting. It just adds another level of complexity. Okay, so let's see how we can solve it. We have 3 to the power z, which is an exponential, but we're going to use Euler's number for our exponentials, okay, because it's better and we can definitely uh, compare them easily. So here's what we're going to do. How do you write 3 to the power z using e as a base? And there's a formula or something called complex exponentiation, a complex number to the power of another complex number, this can be written as e to the power z ln 3. Makes sense? Fairly easy, right? And if you replace a 3 with something else like w, it's going to be e to the power z ln w. How do you find the log of a complex number? That's a good question, but in this case, we have the ln of a real number, so we should be good. Okay? So that's 3 to the power z, great. What about the other side? The other side is more interesting. How do you write negative root 3 using e as a base? It's not a power of e. Well, everything is because, probably except for 0, right? Everything is because of Euler. Thanks to Euler, we have something called a polar form. Any complex number z can be written as r e to the i theta, where I, r is the modulus or the absolute value, and theta is the argument or the angle. Make sense? In this case, we have negative root 3, so its modulus would be root 3, so I should multiply root 3 by something like e to the power i theta. Notice that I just need to multiply by negative 1. But what is negative 1 in the complex plane or argand plane? I guess I should spell out argand so people don't make a mistake about it. Yes. Where does that come from? I seriously do not know. Maybe a guy named argand found this first and it was named after him. But anyway, so we have something like this, a real axis and an imaginary axis, and negative 1 is basically going to be right here. If you connect it to the origin, it's going to be 1 unit away from 0 because its absolute value is 1. Makes sense? But what's more important is the angle. Look at that. It makes a 180 degree angle. That's just a straight angle, right? But we don't like to write it in degrees. We want to use radians. And so that would be pi radians. In other words, the argument, or theta, is equal to pi in this case. And r is, all, of course, 1. So, I can go ahead and write this as e to the power, with, after multiplying by root 3, i times pi. I'd like to say just pi, but I can just add 2 pi to this. It's going to bring me to the same point, and you can keep doing it. You can subtract 2 pi as well, going in the negative direction. In other words, we want to be able to add multiples of 2 pi. Let's go ahead and move this out of the way so we can, oops, sorry, sorry for the dot. Uh, we'll, we'll give you another dot right now. Here we go. And now, instead of writing it as just pi, I want to write it as pi plus 2 pi n, where n is an integer, so we're basically covering the whole ground, all integers, because there are infinitely many values. If n is equal to 0, you get what is called the principal value. Make sense? Okay, that's a special value uh, for which uh, the angle is specified. Great. Now, we have this equation. Let's go ahead and put these two together. I have this and I have that, right? Oops, I almost forgot to include root 3. Let's go ahead and do it. e to the power z ln 3 equals root 3 times e to the power i times pi plus 2 pi n. Again, we can simplify this by replacing m with 0 or 1, whatever. n equals 0 would be the best. Obviously, that would be the simplest. Wait a minute. 
square root of 3 was not written as a power of e. You can write it, you can write it as e to the power ln root 3 or just natural log both sides and that it's going to give you the following. No matter what you do, you should be getting the same thing, e to the power z ln 3. After natural log, it's going to be z ln 3 equals ln root 3 plus, this is going to be ln of e to the something, it's going to be that thing and this is going to be our answer. Awesome. Not really, but we should work this out. <laughs> because we need z, we should multiply both sides by something. I mean, did I say multiply? I meant divide. But again, doesn't matter, right? You can multiply by the reciprocal, it will be division. So let's go ahead and divide both sides by l and 3. And that'll give us a z by itself, so we're done, right? Well, let's simplify this. Don't, don't you think this needs to be simplified a little bit? Okay, so here's what we're going to do. We're going to separate the real and imaginary parts because z is a complex number. Come on. What's the name of this channel? A plus bi. So z is going to be like in the form of a plus bi. as a real part, imaginary part, which is multiplied by i. And that makes up the complex number, right? So let's find out. First of all, I'm going to separate or split the numerator. I just couldn't remember the name for it. And then, of course, the second piece is the imaginary part, which is this. And then the whole thing is going to be multiplied by i. There you go. A plus b i. You know what a and b are, right, in this case? Great. So you can leave it like that, but we like to simplify things as much as possible. And, of course, teachers like them too. A lot of times you're going to lose points if you don't simplify your answer. Okay. And we can do that by writing ln root 3 as ln 3 to the power 1 half. And we have a logarithmic rule that says, hey, you can bring it to the front. So it's going to be like 1 half ln 3 divided by ln 3. And that's just awesome. You know why? Because ln 3 cancels out and we end up with a rational number, which is kind of interesting. We'll talk about that. When ln 3 cancels out, we end up with 1 half and then a piece that is imaginary, right? If n is equal to zero, we're gonna get a simpler one, but let's go ahead and write the general formula before we annoy some people first. So that's gonna be the answer. So that's z in the simplest form. But what is it numerically approximately? You can go ahead and plug in the values or use a calculator, whatever, it'll give you some answer. Well, let's simplify this a little bit more or just look at the principal value. If n is equal to zero, then z becomes one half plus pi over ln 3 times i. Some people write it as a plus ib, which is something that I don't necessarily like. I'm not a big fan, at least, because I like to write it as a plus bi, but no big deal. When we write in trigonometric form, we always write the i before the sine of theta, so it becomes like cosine theta plus i sine theta. Make sense? Because if you write it like this, this could be somewhat confusing, don't you think? Is it sine theta i or is sine theta multiplied by Instead of using parentheses, we just put an i here and it's going to be good. Okay, so that's the answer, but here's what I'd like to say, final words here for this video, right? There's a one half. Uh, what is the significance? Now, if you remember the, f uh, I was going to say formula, the problem was this, right? Now, what would happen if you remove the minus sign? z could become one half. That's where the one half comes from. It comes from the real world, but since the answer is not real, we also need to have an imaginary piece. And this brings us to the end of this video. Thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. Please let me know. Don't forget to comment, like, and subscribe. I'll see you next time with another video. Until then, be safe, take care, peace, and bye-bye.